So why do we need Power Pivot? What's the big deal with this anyway? Well, let's start by taking a look at the pivot table problem. You've got two tables. You have a table of transactions and you have a chart of accounts. And now you want to show your amounts with the account names in a pivot table. So what do you do? And the answer to this one for anybody that's worked with pivot tables for a long time is actually pretty obvious. Well, that's easy. You just go and you VLOOK up the two together so that you can take your transactions, VLOOK up the chart of accounts to get the names back, and we go through the process of what we call flattening our data table because a pivot table, naturally, can only work from one table's source. But now we get into bigger issues. What if you want to add budgets? So now you've got three tables, transactions, chart of accounts, and budgets. Which way do you look up in order to flatten these guys into one big table? The challenges that we run into, there's a maximum of one budget record per day, typically on the last day of the month, but there's multiple transactions posted per day. So if you do a VLOOKUP from the transactions table, you're only going to pick up the budgets on the very last day of the month. There might not be, even be a transaction for that day, or there could be six. So you could get somewhere between zero and six different versions of budget coming across which is going to be a bit problematic. What about accounts where there are no budgets or there are no transactions? In either one of those cases, that's going to cause you some problems as well because there's going to be gaps in your data. Do you start with a chart of accounts and look at transactions? Well, you would hope in this case that there would be an account for every single transaction that's been posted, but if there's multiple transactions per day and there's only one record in the chart of accounts, that's not going to help you. Likewise, if you look at budgets. So there's a really, really big challenge here. Without aggregating and losing daily detail, it is impossible to actually solve this and get this into a regular pivot table. This is the unpivotable problem. And this is why we need Power Pivot. Basic pivot tables at some point will let us down. Some of the tables are too complex to flatten for a regular pivot table to use. There's a calculated field language inside a basic pivot table, but unfortunately it's very limited. It even limits the kind of aggregations we can use. If you've ever looked for something like a distinct count in a regular pivot table, you'll know what I'm talking about. What Power Pivot adds for you is it adds the ability to link multiple tables and serve one pivot table all from this multiple table source instead of having to go and actually flatten everything down into one table first. It adds a robust language to build complex pivot table formula. Now, this language is so robust that we're going to touch on it in this course, but there is a huge amount of time that you can actually spend here learning different things. It's like Excel formulas. There are hundreds of these things that you can actually work with. So I'll get you introduced to some of them inside this course. What I will tell you is that that language will give you the ability to build virtually any aggregation you need. You want a distinct count? That's easy. Do you need a standard deviation to go across your table? No problem. We can make that happen. All of these things are possible using the DAX formula language. This gives us the ability to build refreshable custom business intelligence for our solutions, stuff that we couldn't necessarily do when we're working with just standard pivot tables.